So, once again, we want to thank our great sponsors from NYSIT for their generous donation. We want to thank the Westchester County Democratic Committee. Uh, we want to thank Uh, we want to thank uh, Patrick Jenkins and Associates, um, and there's so many more. So take a quick look at all the great sponsors that we have on the screen, and make sure you give them a huge round of applause, because they really uh, help us to make this happen. So as that's going along, and to keep the, to keep the uh, game going smooth, I'm going to introduce the next guest. So I am in love with the next guest. Uh, there's no... There is no which way, which way about it. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Chuck Schumer, the Senate Minority Leader, jumped on a about a one hour and 15 minute call with the New York City Young Democrats back in March when the pandemic just, just started. And we were all just so confused and we did not know what to do. So we were looking towards electeds to really give us the real information because we know that Donald Trump won't. So we called Chuck Schumer and he said, you know what? We're good. I got it. We're going to get on a call. I'm going to tell everyone what I know, and we're going to fight back. He did just that. And ever since that one call in March, we have had a outstanding relationship with him and his office. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to announce the next Senate Majority Leader, because we're going to show Moscow Mitch the door. Ladies and gentlemen, the next Senate Majority Leader, Chuck Schumer. Thank you, Jovan, and it's great to be with everybody. Thank you all for being here. I want to thank my dear friend right back at you, Jovan. I love you. You've done a great job. And now you're the executive director of the Westchester County Democratic Committee. So you're constantly showing us all that young gets it done. And to all the great young Dems, all the way from Brookhaven to Buffalo and in between, thank you, thank you, thank you. You are what you're doing despite, I know the pandemic creates challenges, but the Young Democrats of New York has kept going and going and going and doing great things. And with 16 days left to the election, you young, the Young Dems are working so hard. Yesterday, many of you phone bank for Sarah Gideon, our great Senator from Maine. She's gonna send Susan Collins, who voted for Kavanaugh and votes with McConnell and voted for 179 of these awful judges. We're sending her back to Maine. And then I know today people teamed up with the young professionals for Biden for a New York day of action. So thank you. And I know what it's like to be a young Dem. I start my first political office was president of the young Dems at my college. The Vietnam war was raging. The Vietnam war was raging. People were being drafted. I lost a friend from high school, from Madison high school who was shot and killed in that horrible war after being drafted. And I'd been cut from the basketball team at freshman year in college, and I didn't know what I'd do. And a guy knocks on my door and says, how would you like to join, join the Young Dems? We're going to work in the New Hampshire primary against Lyndon Johnson with, for a man named Eugene McCarthy, who was fighting the Vietnam War. Well, I joined up. And for four years, that's what I did. I protested. I picketed. I worked for candidates. All the things you're doing now. So that's how I got my start as a Young Dem. So I know what it's like. And I know what it's like to not just have the title, but to be an activist, and that's what you are. So thank you, thank you, thank you. You give us strength, you give us hope, and yes, I wanna be the majority leader, and with you on my side, we're gonna make that happen. And if I get to be majority leader, we're gonna tackle so many issues. We're gonna deal with climate change in a big and bold way. We're gonna deal with the wealth and income inequality in America. We're gonna pass comprehensive immigration reform. We're gonna deal with criminal justice and the discrimination in the police departments that affects people of color. We're gonna do some, we're gonna do an infrastructure bill and wire every home, rural and inner city for broadband where they don't have it. We got a lot to do. And your help in making that happen is so, so valuable because we're not just gonna win, we're gonna change America. We're gonna get America back on track, helping the people who need help and uh, working hard. So I thank you for all of that. Now, I wanna thank some of the honorees. Tish James, your great attorney general. Uh, she won the Trailblazer Award. Uh, Tish, I won it in 2016, but it's gotten to be a better award since you've won it. I wanna thank Mondaire Jones. What a great new Congressman Mondaire is gonna be. We've become friends. We're working on some issues. For instance, Elizabeth Warren and I have a bill to say that 
50,000, that, that Joe Biden, without legislation, can just sign something the day he becomes president, $50,000 of everybody's student loans is gone and gone. 75% of all people with student loans will not have them anymore. And uh, guess who's helping us carry that in the house when he gets there? Mr. Mondaire Jones, as well as Jamal Bowman, uh, and as well as Richie Torres, our three great new freshmen uh, who are coming in. Uh, I wanna thank uh, Karina Raines from the 87th. Um, she's the young elected of the year. Where are you, Karina? Well, thank you. Uh, labor leader, Mike Grubiak, I heard your great talk. I love the UFT, my kids went, I'm one of the few big shot public officials whose kids went to the public schools and got a good education from NYSA teachers, as did I. I wouldn't be here without Mrs. Wagner of social studies uh, from James Madison High School. I wanna thank Stephanie Hausner from Clarkstown, our rookie of the year, Robert Drum, the advocate of the year, Destiny Hallenbach from Union College, the leader of the year, Lauren Suma, and the caucus of the year, Disability Issues, the chapter of the year, Richmond County. So all of you, congratulations. Now, please keep fighting. The stakes are so damn high. What are we gonna do if this awful man, you know, I found a good adjective for Donald Trump. He's an obscene man. He's an obscene president. He is so awful. We gotta get rid of him. And by the way, the good news, if we get rid of him, he's no longer a New York resident. He won't be amongst us. He can go to Florida, good riddance. And uh, we got to elect a Democratic Senate because, you know, Mitch McConnell, the grim reaper, will knock out any legislation that D Joe Biden or the, man, the Democratic House members want. And so we will elect a Democratic Senate and then we will get things done. We will fight so hard for civil rights and labor rights and environmental rights and women's rights and voting rights. And we are going to be inspired, inspired by Justice Ginsburg. She fought, she went to Madison High School, as did I. And by the way, so did Bernie Sanders. She graduated in 1950. She was the head cheerleader. They wouldn't let women be athletes in those days. Her nickname was Kiki. 10, 15 years later, Bernie Sanders graduated. He was on the track team. They won the city championship. And Jovan knows I've told him this story. I went to Madison a few years later and I was on the basketball team. You know what our motto was on the Madison basketball team? We weren't very good. We may be small, but we're slow. Anyway. Ruth Bader Ginsburg fought against a male-dominated legal profession. They discriminated against her. There's a great movie called um, On the Basis of Sex. She fought for women's rights at a time when it was highly unpopular in a male-dominated legal profession. In fact, when she got into Harvard Law School, there were only nine women admitted out of 500 in the freshman class. And the dean of the Harvard Law School named Erwin Griswold, who's supposed to be this big, fancy, famous guy, invited the nine women to meet with the professors for dinner at his house and he asked each one to stand up and he asked them this question. This is true. I asked her children and grandchildren who I met at their memorial service. He said, young lady, tell us why you should be here instead of a play taking the place of a deserving man. Can you believe that? And she couldn't get a job. No law firm would give her a job. She's glad that happened because then she spent her life fighting and she found this, no one thought she could do it. She found this uh, unique way of interpreting the Constitution, the 14th Amendment. She found a judge out in Denver who would go along. And she was the first person to get the courts to declare sex discrimination on the basis of gender is illegal, unconstitutional, amazing. So she fought against big odds. We have big odds with Donald Trump and the big corporate interests who are fighting us, just like she prevailed. If we fight, we will. So young Dems, keep up the fight. Thank you for letting me speak. Jovan, keep up your good work and on to victory in two weeks and one day. Thank you.